How's it going, DeFiers? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of DeFi Deluxe. I'm going to keep my camera off this week because I'm having trouble with the colors on it. 2020 was the year of protocol launches, so let's hope 2021 is all about growth and the launch of version 2 for many of these products. Let's go over five of my favorite altcoin projects specifically for the Ethereum ecosystem. First up is Tornado, which is one I've mentioned briefly in the past, and this one is important to the ecosystem because of privacy. The blockchain is completely public and open, and if we seriously want dApps to become our savings accounts, we are going to need some privacy. Tornado Cash allows anonymous transactions on Ethereum, acting as a sort of Tumblr service by using smart contracts to mix funds. They act as a proxy to ensure the transaction is 100% anonymous using ZK Snark proofs, which I am a huge fan of. As Tornado Cash recently noted on Twitter, finally people realized that we should start integrating privacy into modern DeFi apps. And as DeFi Pulse Farmer reports under their conservative farmer section, Tornado is our farming opportunity of the week with over 300% APR via anonymity mining. They say that the gist is that you simply deposit ETH into Tornado, wait and that's it. You can later redeem the AP points generated by your deposit and convert it into the protocol's governance token TORN. The good news is that Tornado depositors rack up lots of AP in short order. However, they do note that the farm requires you to pay high network fees to deposit ETH, convert to TORN, withdraw, etc. So you'll need to keep your deposit in long enough for your earnings to make up for those expenses. If you are interested in mining with Tornado, just head on over to app.tornado.cash slash mining and connect your wallet here. Tornado Cash is sitting at a 99 million market cap currently, and as you can see, they just came out with the token on February 9th, so it hasn't been around that long, and there haven't really been any significant pumps yet. With the all-time high being a 436, this one is definitely going to have a lot of room to grow. Next up is the graph, which I have also talked about before, back when it launched and it pumped almost all the way to a dollar, but didn't quite make it there. Well, it is rallying again. Holy cow, look at this. It went all the way up to around 266 at one point and is floating down around 213 right now. The graph is just as integral of a protocol as Chainlink, and that's an important fact to consider when comparing the market caps. Chainlink is currently holding a $12 billion market cap, while the graph is a mere $2 billion. I think over time, this token may discover a valuation closer to its Chainlink counterpart. Up until the graph was created, DeFi apps were limited because they had to set up everything from scratch. What we are now seeing form are what I would call service protocols, such as the graph and Chainlink, which perform services for the ETH ecosystem as a whole, which makes it easier for developers to focus on being creative and design their apps without having to worry about some of the lower level functionalities. We've seen the same thing happen in the centralized software world, right? With the transition of everything moving from local servers to the cloud. This has helped create the software as a service movement, and it provides the abilities for companies to focus on what they do best instead of having to waste time and resources on things like infrastructure. AWS would be the Web 2 version of this, whereas Web 3, you have things like the graph, which is creating APIs for developers to query data on the blockchain. The cool thing about the DeFi world is that you can invest in these innovative technologies and the graph is definitely one of them. If you plan on holding the governance token GRT for the long haul, there are four ways you can contribute as an indexer, a curator, a delegator, or a consumer. Indexers run the nodes and this is technically advanced. I'll focus on the other two non-technical roles, curating and delegating. The graph says that curators are subgraph developers, data consumers, or community members who signal to indexers which subgraphs should be indexed by the graph network. Curators deposit GRT into a bonding curve to signal that a specific subgraph is good, and they'll earn a portion of query fees for the subgraphs they signal on. This is a little bit more advanced in that you have to know how to determine which subgraphs are good ones and which are not. Delegators, on the other hand, have a much lower technical level because they are essentially just staking their tokens with other validators on the network. So, for example, my address is delegating to this Ryabina.eth node, and that is garnering some rewards. If you're interested, head on over to network.thegraph.com to see a list of all the possible validators you can delegate with. 
Synthetics is already a pretty big market cap at $3.5 billion. However, this powerhouse has shown no signs that it will slow down anytime soon. That's because Synthetics is another one of those protocols that's used under the hood of many popular DeFi apps, meaning that it is going to stick around for the foreseeable future. They are first movers when it comes to synthetic assets, and their CEO Kane Warwick is something of a DeFi celebrity in the crypto Twitter world. One important feature that sticks out about SNX is that its synthetic assets allow trades with no slippage. And unlike other protocols that are focusing on front-end UIs for users, SNX is similar to Chainlink and the Graph in that it is focusing more on the back-end infrastructure of Ethereum, providing APIs for other developers to use. And as I've said before, any protocol that assists developers in building the ecosystem is almost a sure bet in my book. The latest news in the synthetics world is that they are reweighting the SDFI and IDFI index assets with a new composition. Next up is Yearn. If you've already been around the DeFi world for a while, then you already know why Yearn is one of the most important protocols right now. It's not so much the fact that it's currently worth around 40 grand, nor the fact that they created the first of many fair launches. It's more about the fact that they have so many partnerships, and because of these partnerships, they are able to work on products in a lot of different areas, such as insurance, NFTs, saving, lending, etc. Yearn is becoming a behemoth of sorts, evolving into what may be the first DeFi super app. In their recent newsletter, they noted that there is a new Pickle Farm Live that was earning about 162% at the time of publication. And in more Yearn news, they also announced an affiliate program for other protocols who are interested in joining to form a synergistic relationship. And their most recent partnership is with Badger Dow, in which they announced they'll be helping build best-in-class BTC vaults to be housed on Badger's website and will be able to receive rewards in the form of Badger and Dig. Additionally, BadgerDAO is going to be the first protocol to join the said affiliate program. Last and most certainly not least is of course the beast, Chainlink. What would we do without our stinky linkies? I don't even have to tell you all why Chainlink is so integral to Ethereum's ecosystem. But for anyone who isn't entirely sure what it does, Chainlink creates what are called oracles. Oracles gather real world data for blockchains to query. And it's what makes things like price feeds possible in almost every wallet or app that exists. In fact, it's integrated into most DeFi apps and Chainlink doesn't stop there. They are also one of the partners working to help create oracles for the Polkadot ecosystem. So they are going to be around for a long time to come. That's all I'll say about Link, as there isn't much needed to be said about them these days. That's going to do it for my five top altcoins for 2021. Next week, I'm thinking about doing a video on smaller caps that I think will do well. If anyone has any questions or suggestions for content they'd like to see, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. And remember, this is not financial advice. Please hit the subscribe button to stay tuned on all the latest DeFi news and content, and I will see you next week.